go. Um, so thank you guys for coming to the lecture. My name is Scott and I run the Ethnobotanical Conservation Organization or Ethnoco for short because it's too long to say Ethnobotanical Conservation Organization every time. Um, I am an amateur ethnobotanist. I do not have a degree, although I may in the next couple of years. I sort of uh, started coming to Peru and took a, a break from school for a while. So. Um, tonight I'm going to talk about the ethnobotany of Peru uh, with a focus on sacred and psychoactive plants. Um, maybe some of you know uh, this plant. Does anyone know what it is? San Pedro. San Pedro. Oh. Does, any, does anyone know the, uh, the scientific name? Uh, it contains mescaline, um, but the, the genus is Trichocereus which they have recently uh, moved into the Ichinopsis genus, which I don't really agree with the taxonomical reclassification, but that's what they did. So now it's Ichinopsis, but uh, originally Trichocereus. Um, and we'll go more into uh, information about San Pedro and Trichocereus in the lecture. Um, so I started coming to Peru in 2010 with a company called the Botanical Preservation Corps, which is now um, uh, defunct, it's, it's gone out of business. You guys can uh, pass this around and, and take a look at that if you'd like. Um, that's their field collection manual, tells you how to collect plants and seeds and how to, um, basically the idea behind the company was that travelers going around the world could collect plants and seeds and send them back to this place as sort of an ethnobotanical bank to preserve uh, crops and medicinal plants and all sorts of, of useful plants. So yeah, my first time was 2010. And I've been living here for six to 12 months a year since then. Um, so Peru is a land of three regions. You have the coastal region, the Andean region, and Amazonia. Um, we are here in Cusco, of course, as you guys know. And the Andean region runs through sort of the, the middle of Peru. And to the east, you have the Amazon. And to the west, you have the, the coastal region. Um, I believe. This is, uh, I'm not going to be correct with the numbers, but there's something like 120 climate zones on Earth, and Peru has something like 95, um, or somewhere around there. So, yeah, three, three main regions, the coast, the Andes, and the Amazon. Um, the Andes and the Amazon and the coast support a, a huge range of biodiversity, including many useful plants, such as yacón, coca, cacao, yuca, pineapple, achiote, cherimoya, and over 2,000 types of potatoes. Some people say 3,000. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many there are, but point being, Peru has a, a huge uh, diversity of useful plants and many that have been um, spread across the world. Um, potatoes are originally from Peru and Bolivia, but of course now they're an integral part of many cuisines around the world, Ireland, US, you know, wherever. Um, there's a bit of de debate about where cacao came from. Some people uh, think it came from Mexico. But recent genetic tests have uh, shown that it's more likely that it came from the Amazonian region. Actually, uh, near, probably near here, I don't know if you guys have heard of Kiabamba, but it's most likely from sort of the southwestern Amazon region, and then it made its way to Mexico. Um, yeah, and the pineapple is, uh, was domesticated in the Amazon as well. It's the only uh, domesticated bromeliad, as far as I'm aware. And, yeah, there's a plethora of <coughs> plants here in Peru. These are some of the, uh, the tubers. Um, I think some of them are potatoes, so solanum species, and the other are uh, oxalis species. Um, I think it's called oyuco. You guys heard of oyuco? They put in soups and, uh, and things like that. So, uh, what is ethnobotany? Uh, I define ethnobotany as the relationship between plants and people. So an ethnobotanical would be any plant that people use for any re reason. So anything from uh, coffee, which we drink as a stimulant, um, potatoes and food crops are ethnobotanicals, as well as uh, medicinal and ornamental plants. So ethnobotany is the relationship between plants and people. Um, this is myself and uh, Senor Melchor, who is one of our, our contacts in uh, a remote region known as the Mapacho River Valley. It's about, uh, about five hours from here. And you guys can see here an example of uh, what I call the master weaver textiles. These are the, the highest quality uh, textiles 
that I've ever seen in Peru. Um, it's all baby alpaca, all natural dyes. And these, these things are for sale if anyone's interested. Uh, feel free to look at this stuff on the table. There's some coca if anybody wants coca. Uh, there's also yipta over there. Do you guys know what yipta is? Nobody? All Do right. they know coca? Um, yipta is a base. It's uh, ashes. Uh, I think the one I have is made from the stalks of quinoa. They'll take a ceramic pot, put the stalks of quinoa, not the grain itself, but the stalks, and then burn it in a fire and mix it with uh, water to make this sort of uh, paste. And you put that in your mouth when you're chewing coca. You gotta be careful because it can burn your mouth. Um, but you put it in your mouth when you're chewing coca and it basically activates the coca. Um, I find that coca doesn't really work. I don't feel anything from it if I don't have the, the yipta. So if you've never uh, chewed coca with yipta, I would recommend trying it. Uh, so next slide, what is shamanism? So I define shamanism, uh, people define it in different ways, but I define it as um, a religion or spiritual practice that has a direct connection with the divine. So I um, can't remember who, who said this, but uh, I believe it was Wade, one of Wade Davis's contacts, who's one of the most famous ethnobotanists of, the, of modern times. Um, he was talking, I think, to a, a Haitian informant, and he said, uh, you people, you know, Americans or white people or Western people or whatever you want to call it, uh, you go to the church to talk about God, whereas we go into the forest or into ceremony and talk directly with God. So um, shamanism is a, a, a direct connection with the divine. Um, you have the, the three D's of, of shamanism, um, drumming or music, uh, dreams, and drugs. Those are the, the three ways that uh, people who practice shamanic religions uh, connect with the divine. So um, this is Silverio, a, a Machinga contact of mine. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about the Machinga later. Um, Silverio is known as a, a Serepegari or a Cordendero, basically a shaman. Um, in his language, Machienga, the word Serepegari means the one intoxicated by tobacco. Tobacco is the most, uh, one of the most important plants in Amazonian shamanism. Um, even more important in many cases than ayahuasca or coca or anything like that. Tobacco is basically uh, one of the principal master plants of, of Amazonian peoples. So, yeah. Um, what is an entheogen? Does anybody know what an entheogen is? Okay. <laughs> um, oh, I don't. You do? Yeah, what is it? It's a psychedelic, but it's like a new word for it. Basically, it's a psychedelic. So, um, but more um, strictly, it is a, a plant that gives you a connection with the divine or induces a feeling of um, connection with God or, or spirituality. So in different contexts, um, entheogens, so I have matcha green tea here for example. Matcha green tea would not usually be an entheogen in the way that most people use it. Most people use it uh, you know, in the morning to, with caffeine just as a, as a nice tea. However, in the context of the Japanese tea ceremony, when it's used with such reverence and um, you know, a, a sophisticated ceremony and, and paraphernalia such as the whisk, um, it then becomes an entheogen because it's being used to in, induce a feeling of uh, divinity or connection with the, with the spiritual world. So entheogens, um, they, depending on the, the role they're playing, they can uh, make a... Uh, it, can, it can either be an entheogen or not be an entheogen, depending on how it's used. So in the context of Japanese tea ceremony, matcha is, but normally probably not. The other picture is of uh, Amanita muscaria. Um, commonly seen in fairy, fairy tales or Mario. Um, that's the one that Mario eats to get big. Um, it, it is traditionally used in Siberia um, as an entheogen uh, by the Siberian shamans. And an interesting thing, the, the word shaman is actually a Siberian word. Um, so that's a, a long, English took that word from, I think it's Tsunga, don't quote me on that, but um, a Siberian language and culture that uh, practices shamanism using the Amanita muscaria mushroom. Um, this mushroom does not contain psilocybin, like the classic magic mushrooms that you're probably thinking of. It contains uh, muscimol and ibotenic acid and gives a very different uh, experience. Um, these are legal the, the world over. Um, I'm not encouraging anyone use drugs, nor am I discouraging.